10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lift off. Go Falcon, go and power. Vehicle is pitching downrange. MOD chamber pressure is nominal. At T plus 30 seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying the O3B Empower payload. In just a few seconds, we'll throttle the engines down in preparation for max Q, which is the period, Power of, telemetry nominal. period of maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is a critical moment during flight because the combined stress Falcon is... Falcon 9 is supersonic. The combined stress is caused by Falcon 9 accelerating through the atmosphere and the ambient static pressure are at their greatest. Max Q. And there's the call out for Max Q. Now the rocket typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. So if you like, you can track our progress to orbit by watching the left corner of your display that's showing stage one telemetry. Now we have several events coming up in quick succession. Back, and we should hear all of these called out by mission control, starting with main engine cutoff or MECO then stage separation, SES-1, and fairing separation. MECO is where we shut down all nine M1D engines on the first stage. Stage separation is when the first and second stages of Falcon separate from one another. And then second engine start one, or SES-1, is when we'll light the MVEC engine on the second stage for the first time. Less than a minute later, the fairing will then jettison from the second stage, as it's no longer needed to protect the payload once we're in space. So let's keep an eye out for these events happening back to back in about 20 seconds from now. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. We should be hearing that call out for fairing separation in just a few moments from now. Uh, as mentioned earlier, we will be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves once they fall back down to Earth. They'll be taken to shore by our ocean recovery vessel, Bob. Fairing separation confirmed. And a great call out for fairing separation. So we are T plus three minutes and 38 seconds into today's mission, and we're currently in the first of two planned MVEC burns for satellite deployment. The next major milestone is coming up at T plus six minutes and 13 seconds, where you should see the first stage's entry burn on your screen. For the entry burn, we'll relight three of the M1D engines, starting with the center E9 engine, followed shortly after by the E1 and E5 engines, which slows down the vehicle as it passes back into Earth's atmosphere. You'll be able to follow along with that relight with the graphics along the bottom of your screen. We use that re-entry burn to slow down to reduce the re-entry forces, which helps us recover and reuse the first stage. SES has collaboratively designed the O3B Empower satellites with their long-standing satellite manufacturing partner, Boeing. O3B Empower is built on the proven track record of SES's O3B constellation of 20 MEO satellites. 
The first generation MEO system, O3B, has been delivering high performance communication services since 2014 to customers operating in nearly 50 countries today. SES has been deploying the second generation O3B and power services worldwide since April 2024, with the system's core infrastructure deployed, tested, and in use on a global basis. Reusability is the key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, and the Falcon 9's first stage that is supporting today's mission will perform this entry burn for its sixth time. It previously supported SCS's Empower mission back in December last year, NASA's Crew-10 mission, SpaceX's Bandwagon 3 rideshare, and two Starlink missions. During the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but the vehicle is still moving really fast. This causes it to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, which are also known as the rocket's plume, and deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle surface, which is why our flight-proven vehicles look the way that they do. That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, the soot builds up a little bit more on the outside of the vehicle. Oftentimes, prior to launch, you can see some of that soot from prior flights on the first stage. Stage 1, entry burn startup. Stage 1, FTS is saved. And there was the callout for the entry burn startup on the Falcon 9 first stage. The burn is set to last about 25 seconds and again is slowing down the vehicle in preparation for its final burn and landing. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. And there is a great call out for the entry burn shutdown, the completion of the Falcon 9 first stage's entry burn. Coming up next will be SECO-1, or second engine cutoff, in less than a minute, followed by the first stage landing burn. The Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. The MVEC engine on the second stage, however, has a much wider stage nozzle. Stage two is in terminal guidance. And is optimized to 120,500 pounds of thrust and vacuum. Coming up next, we'll start our MVEC engine shutdown on the second stage, followed quickly by the landing burn on the first stage. We can expect to see Stage one, one transonic. Stage two FTS is saved. I'm back. Shut down. We're now coming up on the landing burn for the first stage. Nominal orbit insertion. Stage one landing burn. There was the call out for the landing burn start on the Falcon 9 first stage. And this is the final burn that this booster will see before touching down on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Stage one landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And there you saw and heard the call out for a successful landing of our Falcon 9 rocket. This landing marks the sixth landing for this booster. 